So the third question is a much more technical question and may even come from a, a, a young bassoonist, I'm not quite sure. The question is, uh, about halfway through the finale of Beethoven's Fourth Symphony, there comes, out of the blue, a blistering string of sixteenth notes. How on earth do you do that? Do you have to tongue each note separately, or can you double tongue like brass instruments? The short answer to the question is yes, we double tongue like the brass instruments. Now, some of the viewers may not know the term double tonguing or its uh, companion single tonguing, so I'll just explain about that a little bit. Uh, to articulate notes, what we always do is uh, the tongue uh, makes con tip of the tongue makes contact uh, with the tip of the reed, and this produces an articulated sound or the front end of a note. Uh, and players have uh, varying abilities to go uh, very fast uh, with that kind of articulation. Sometimes music goes faster and faster and sort of off the chart, and you need another sort of alternate technique, or I guess I should say an extended technique, to articulate those notes even faster than is uh, normally possible. So we use a technique called double tonguing. So uh, double tonguing is where every other note is articulated in the manner of single tonguing, but the notes in between are articulated by the tongue going to the back of the mouth and making contact with the soft palate. And this produces a kind of puff of air, and that gets the in-between notes. So without a reed uh, in my mouth, the uh, sound, if I were speaking, for single tonguing is ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta, but for double tonguing is ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta and it's uh, quite, uh, quite a lot easier to go quite a lot faster. So here are some um, some single articulated notes. And here's the same string of notes, uh, double tongued at a uh, significantly faster tempo. And those are the last few notes from the Beethoven Fourth Finale solo. So since some of you might be young players uh, who are curious about how to uh, Learn, uh, teach yourself to, uh, uh, to play a solo like this, I think what would be best is if I gave you my practicing strategy. So for a string of notes like this, I generally pick a, a moment sort of close to the end, and I play then all the way to the end. And then as that becomes uh, uh, good, then I add some notes uh, before that. I should go back a bit and say that one of the challenges of Beethoven for a finale is that within the string of notes, there's one sixteenth note that has a grace note attached to it. And uh, if Beethoven had not put that note in there, then this solo would not be that hard. But uh, his having attached this grace note uh, at one point makes the solo kind of uh, over the top uh, difficult. So, uh, so let me uh, practice this uh, a bit for you and then see if I can produce a, a nice clean run through for you. <laughs> Thanks everybody for these really great questions. I really like that there were uh, a couple of general ones and then this very specific one about the Beethoven IV. Uh, you might find it interesting that the Toronto Symphony will be performing Beethoven's Fourth Symphony this season. So if you'd like to come out and cheer me on for that last movement, that would be much appreciated because it's one of the toughest solos uh, in their repertoire. Uh, thanks again for writing in and have a terrific summer and uh, hope that you join us in the fall at Roy Thompson Hall. Bye-bye.